Hello everyone and welcome to Linux Desktop December part 17 where I'll be reviewing the Vera desktop. This is from Semplice Linux. Unfortunately this desktop appears to be dead, it's a lone developer working on the project and looking at the GitHub page the last commit was nearly two years ago. Now I've taken the Debian SID version, now if you know about Debian SID you'll know it's a rolling release and uh, <laughs> can cause problems and certainly in this case it is one that can cause problems if you do the updates. Because upon the update, it almost failed to work. Uh, it was sort of there, but uh, most of the desktop was failing to render correctly. So, we're looking at the Debian SID version from almost two years ago with no updates. So, um, hmm. let's be careful where we browse on the internet, because uh, that could be <laughs> fairly catastrophic with uh, leaking in vulnerabilities. Now, it does follow on nicely from the desktop I reviewed yesterday, which was Pantheon, because this too is built on Vala and it uses the GTK3 framework. It's a bit more of a unique layout than I've seen in most Linux desktops, so I thought even if it is almost dead, it's worth a look at. Starting with a look at how much memory is in use, you can see we're using about 456 meg of RAM, of which only 268 meg is actually in the RAM itself, the other bits on the hard drive in the swap area. So you can see from the layout of the desktop, it is very simple. I mean, there's no way of immediately launching the applications there from this panel at the bottom of the screen. The area on the left hand side is taken up by the currently open applications. On the right hand side we have the network, although these menus don't seem to be rendering very well with the shadow enabled, so I might just go and turn that off in a moment. So we've got the clipboard manager as well, volume control, time and calendar. So there's two ways of launching applications on this system. You can either right click on the desktop, or well, there was a guide when I first installed the system on what to do. It was very large letters across the screen, very simple really. Gave you the idea of how to get started with the system. So yeah, I can either launch an application that way, or you can start typing. Just immediately start typing and it picks up applications there. So Ice Weasel, use the arrow keys or the mouse and open the application that way. Simple enough. So I can drag the application down from the top of the screen, but what happens when I push it to the right hand side? Oh, we can resize the halves, even though it doesn't look like it. Yeah, funny enough, Pantheon desktop did that as well, didn't it? But it doesn't resize the right hand side. I expect what it does though is pushes it to another desktop. Yes, it does. You can just see the pop up there on the screen. We do have some sort of arrow snap effect. I've got to turn these shadows off. They're causing this screencast to glitch badly, aren't they? So let's go to settings, into appearance, and you can change the effect. So what I'm going to do is disable this shadows. That's better. Now, hopefully, it'll stop going mad. It's strange, it wasn't really doing this when I first enabled them, but I've rebooted the system since then, so I don't know, I don't know what conclusion to draw from that really. Anyway, this is some settings you can change on the effects, you can change how the rendering is done, whether you're doing vSync or not, and you can change the fonts, as well as font hinting. Well now I'm in the settings, let's carry on and look at some of the other settings, or oh, you'll notice the partial transparency there on the application, yeah, that was something I set. The panel at the bottom of the screen was transparent already. So auto start, yeah, nothing special there. Desktop, that's just a desktop wallpaper. Panel, ah, we can enable launchers. So that's just like a favorite applications. Let's try that. Is it doing anything? Don't know. Doesn't seem to want to do anything much, does it? Oh, it does when you go back. Okay, hang on, let's change that again. So panel, add, calculator, select, go back. Ah, yes, there we go. So we have a shortcut in the panel. I'm curious what it looks like when you have it at the center. <laughs> Literally in the center of the screen. But nothing overlays it. So what is the point of having it in the middle of the screen? Anyway, look, there's some various settings you can do on the panel. Device details, so running Semplice 7. Codename Comfortably Numb. <laughs> comfortably Numb. Made with love in Italy, enjoyed everywhere. Okay. Features. That's just some of the settings you can turn on and off. I turned off the Bluetooth and printing support during the installation. So everything else in the system settings seems fairly standard. There's one problem I have noticed with the launcher. Let's go and open a couple of things. So let's try for Ice Weasel and maybe the file manager. So file manager, ah, PC Man FM is the file manager. 
So I've got a couple of applications at the top of the screen. Now to open another thing. So let's try for Abbey Word. Oops. <laughs> no. Okay, fair enough. I can still sort of see it there. So I'm going to open up this bash script, which opens in the mouse pad. The mouse pad is a bit dull and boring, really. And why is it flickering when I'm scrolling with the mouse wheel? Pass. Don't know. That's probably a virtual box issue. It's so opened a couple of image files. There we go. Oh, it's opened it in the browser. Okay, can we open it anything else? Right click, uh, open in Mirage. I used to quite like Mirage for the image viewer. So you can do a little bit of editing in Mirage. So rotation and cropping resizing. Now that about sums up most of the features really on the desktop. Now you'll notice uh, there's a couple of things I've really missed like opening up videos. Okay, we've got GNOME mPlayer there, but uh, I don't remember that particularly running well in the VirtualBox. I'm gonna give it a go though. So there's no multimedia integration. There's a surprise. Oh, so you can play, pause and rewind from here in the controls that appear in the panel. My initial intention was to try and get VLC on here, but uh, I wasn't in the repositories. I'd have had to enable something to get it going. I wanted to install some Qt applications, but in order to do that, I would have had to have upgraded. Unfortunately, upgrading doesn't work very well. It breaks things. So I opted not to do the upgrades. So it does limit the amount I can show you. Well, that's good there. The memory usage has barely increased. So really, that's all I can show you of the Vera desktop. It does look quite an interesting desktop. Unfortunately, it's just brought down by the fact that without the upgrades, without anyone working on the project actively, it's just going to break. Well, thanks for watching. See you later.